Thanks everybody for coming tonight. It's a great turnout. Um, this is the last talk, like Tim was saying, and it's going to be a quick one, uh, hopefully. So there's not much to this. Uh, I've got like eight or nine slides, and they're very, very simple. I'm basically, just going to show you simple headings here and let's go for each one. I've got presenter notes on my phone here, so if I'm constantly looking at my phone, I'm not like going on a website or something or doing text messaging. Um, I'm reading my notes. Um, so yeah, there's six main points to this. And uh, I'll give you an overview of what this is about, or why I'm getting this talk. Um, I've, I've been working now for, for three different companies. Uh, I've worked with lots of different P types of PHP code, code bases, things like that. And you sort of get, as I said, I've been doing this for like 12 years now, and you get a sense over that time of certain annoyances, uh, Frustrations you have dealing with uh, certain code bases, code that other people have written, and you look at it and think, if only they had done it a different way or a way that I could better understand. I'm sure most people in this room have been there. Uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so this has prompted this talk, and what I will say is that this is this is really the basis of a larger talk. I think I'm just going to summarise some things here. Um, I don't mean to sound like, uh, this, this is advice as well. Some of the things you'll see here, you may be looking at me and think, where the hell does he get off suggesting stuff like this? Um, it's a, my advice, my personal advice, um, best practice, I guess, maybe. Um, and another thing we'll say is I'm guilty as charged of everything I'm gonna talk about here, okay? I've done bad things in the past, I'll continue to do bad things moving forward. The only difference is this time, Moving forward, I'm sort of aware of it. Okay, I'm aware of what I'm doing wrong, and I know how to better fix things in the future. Okay, so I, I sort of it's like a process of continual improvement, right? So six points, and um, first point we're going to talk about, and this is going to seem pretty. Uh, you'll see. Lose the ego. Accept that there are people out there doing what you do who do it better. They have more knowledge, more experience, they work on bigger projects. Um, the key thing is to embrace that knowledge. Okay? Go to websites, read blogs, find out about these people, look at the projects on GitHub. Um, talking about like, things like Laravel and stuff, these, these big projects, frameworks. Read blogs by the people who author these projects. Look at the source code that's involved. Constantly sort of learn and realize that there are people who have a better sort of understanding of how these things work. Um, I know that might be, be a little bit sort of deflating, but your aim is to get to their level. Okay? You always want to be improving yourself, improving the way you do things, and looking up to these guys, these guys, um, well, men and women, um, and treat them as mentors in a way. Mentors that you can't really communicate with, but you can see their output, okay? Learn from their experience. Also, don't really put too much stock in your own opinion about things. I know that sounds kind of strange, but over time, you formulate opinions about certain bits of code or projects, things like that there. Um, personally, I, I can't stand WordPress. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not the only one, as you can see from some of the talks tonight. Um, but don't really, don't sort of use those opinions and have them shape your outlook or shape, uh, shape your overview of how to do PHP developed or any sort of development, okay? Um, and the like of the same WordPress. WordPress is used by millions of websites. It's by far the most popular PHP project out there. Uh, lots of people use it, lots of people abide by it, swear by it. So I might personally not like WordPress, but it's on me to know about it. It's on me to be familiar with it. It's on me to know how to work with it. Okay? There's an example uh, in one of my past companies. There was a fellow who um, he had joined, he'd been in the company for a few weeks, not the names here. He'd been in the company for a few weeks and he'd written a bit of code, a bit of JavaScript code, and 
he, uh, he hadn't used a, a JavaScript framework like jQuery to do it. And I remember asking him, well, you know, why, why are you doing these AJAX calls using uh, you know, X XML object or X HTTP object, whatever it is? Uh, why are you doing this? Why are you making it difficult for yourself? And he said, I could use something like jQuery, but I don't really like it because when you're debugging things, it just gets in the way and it makes it more difficult to debug. jQuery is used by the BBC, it's used by Google, it's used by all these large companies, all these large websites. So why would somebody think that he is sort of above that? He doesn't need to use jQuery, it's an obstacle that gets in the way of what he's trying to do. Don't, don't think like that. Okay? Try and sort of wind your neck in, I guess is the, uh, the, the wrong term. Um, don't formulate these opinions on bits of software that don't really have much of a basis, basis uh, in fact. Okay? It's easy to do, just try to avoid it. The second point is be resourceful. This is something I mentioned before. Um, read websites, read blogs, watch screencasts. Darren mentioned Laracasts there. If you're using Laravel for anything, you should be subscribed to Laracasts. Um, find out about the PHP ecosphere. You know, there's there's so much stuff there that you can take advantage of um, and learn from. Okay, even down to things like your IDE that you're using. Okay. If you're using an IDE, uh, an IDE day to day, know it inside out, know how to the right code faster, more efficiently. Uh, actually, uh, read up on the PHP manual, go to PHP internals sometimes. Uh, why not just read up and see what's happening in actual PHP development, development of the language. Just be aware of what's out there. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, if you're working in a company uh, or you're uh, on a course or something like that there, by all means, ask questions of your colleagues. Um, there are no stupid questions at all, but there are quick answers. So maybe consider before you ask something, use your own initiative, Google it, go to Stack Overflow, go to any other site that would provide, potentially provide that answer. Chances are you might get a better answer. Avoid making wild stops in the dark to make things work. Hacks. Um, again, something we've all done time after time. What I advise is to understand every line of code you write. So don't copy and paste a bit of code from some website that fixes a problem you may have with your project. Don't just copy that in and think, whatever, I don't understand it, I don't get it, but it works. Don't, don't do that, understand it. Figure out why it's working. Because it could be that later on down the line you need to go back to that bit of code, or somebody else needs to go back to that bit of code, and they don't know what the hell it does. So understand it, learn about it, okay? Figure these things out. So apply what you learn, but only when it suits. If you're working in a company and you're working on a project to a deadline, probably don't want to just sort of think, well, you know, this project's due in a week and a half. There's this nice new CMS called October CMS, or a nice new framework that uh, I heard about at PHP Belfast. I want to give it a go for this project. Don't, don't do that. By all means, apply what you've learned, okay? You hear about these things, and then people go home, and they don't think about them again. They don't touch them. I've done it. It's such a waste. You can know, find out what's out there, experiment with things. But do it at the right time. Do it in your personal projects. If you're working on a project for a company, for a client, if it's a big, uh, if there's a, a large project, uh, if the time scale isn't too tight on it, it's way down the road, if you've got plenty of flexibility, by all means, use that time. If you've got time to spend or time to spare on something like this here, make the best use of it. Okay? Learn, find out more. So don't, don't compromise a project for the sake of experimentation. Ultimately, think about who could be affected if things go wrong. <coughs> so that might be the client, it might be your own employer, uh, it might be you, further down the line. 
It might be somebody you work with who has to inherit that project at some point. Always be thinking, what if? What happens if this goes wrong? And then plan things around that. Don't reinvent the wheel. So we've got frameworks, you've got things like Composer, you've got libraries, components, all of this good stuff that exists for PHP. So much of it has come about these last few years and it's all, it's all great. It makes your life so much easier. So don't go and rewrite an image manipulation library. Don't go and rewrite a, your own NPC framework and then use it on a client's website. Well, there's no point to that, okay? You're just wasting your own time. Again, you're potentially wasting the client's time, your company's time. There's no need. People have done it already. Uh, pretty much anything you can think of, any task you can think of that you want to employ on a project, somebody has already done that, and I guarantee they'll have done it better. Take advantage of that. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't, in any circumstances, do stuff like this. You, there's a lot to be gained by, in your own time, writing a library, uh, doing something your own way, writing your own MPC framework, for example, your own little framework. You can learn a lot by doing that. Just do it in your own time, okay? So again, think about who will actually be working with the code in the future. If you use something like an open source framework, an open source component, something that's been pulled in using Composer, for packages, whatever, any, anything that exists online and has been used by other people, if you're using that and somebody else comes onto your project down the line, whether it's weeks, months, years, it doesn't matter, if it's a component that's already out there, it's already well documented, other projects are using it, you're not going to go too far on there. They're going to be able to get up to speed on that component or framework or whatever very quickly. If you write your own system, somebody comes to that years down the line, they look at it and think, what was this person thinking? I don't understand this, there's no documentation, I'm trying to figure out how this all fits together, there's weird things happening off in weird files, I just don't know what the hell I'm doing. You end up with, having been in that situation, <coughs> it's extremely frustrating and you end up wanting to redo the entire project and send to your client executive, project manager, whatever, that this whole thing is absolutely shite, it needs rewritten from the ground up, blah, blah, blah. You guys can prevent that from happening. Make use of what's out there, don't be in that room. Implement coding standards. Does everybody know what coding standards are? Good. Um, there are three parts to this. When you're starting a new project and you're not using a particular framework, use your company's internal standards, assuming you work for a company. Okay? Use their own standards. If those standards don't actually exist, they should do. If they don't, use whatever employees of that company would normally use. There's probably some sort of standard that people have figured out for themselves, use that, don't deviate from that. If that standard doesn't exist, if you can't figure it out, use a well-known standard. PSR uh, 1, PSR 2, uh, if you don't know what those are, uh, Google them after this. They're just popular uh, coding standards for PHP projects. Same standards for things like indentation, uh, spaces instead of intents, uh, naming of variables, classes, all that jazz. If you're uh, dealing with a project that's using the same coding standard throughout, and it's one that you're familiar with, you're able to focus on the code itself and not the formatting. Not trying to figure out, well, why is that named that way? Why is that, that line indented away off to the right? You don't have to worry about that stuff. So, don't worry about that. When you're starting a project with a framework, use that framework standard. No exception. Use that framework standard. This is something that I myself am guilty of doing right up until maybe about three weeks ago. Uh, Lar I, I use Laravel, um, and Laravel itself uses PSR0 at the moment 
and it uses this sort of style of, um, I don't know, I'm not really going to describe it here, it uses a particular style, uh, a coding style, that I wasn't overly familiar with, I didn't particularly like, so I thought, well, for my own code, regardless, you know, it's not part of Laravel, it's my own application, with my own domain, I'll use my own coding standard, it doesn't matter. And then, when I started running into files that Laravel gives to you, generates for you, using that artisan command, they're all done in their own certain way, their own coding standard, and I was fighting against that. For months and months, and maybe even years. Um, and it only just dawned on me about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, that what the hell am I doing? Just use Laravel standard. Far easier. When you're working on an existing project, use that project standard. Okay. So if you, again, are working on a project that someone has written years and years and years ago, the coding standard's all over the place, it's just rubbish, it's difficult to deal with, suck it up, use the same standard. Okay. If, it's using, if, you, if you prefer using space instead of tabs in your source code, but this project uses tabs, well, you're going to use tabs when you're working on this project. If it uses underscores in variable names, but you hate doing that <coughs> for this project, you'll be doing that. One of the worst things you can do when dealing with coding standards is to mix standards. So don't mix standards. You might not like what you see, you might not like what you're doing. Just do it. It's far, far easier. It's far simpler in the long run, and you will actually see the benefits of all doing that. All right, last slide. Have pride in what you do. Don't be lazy, okay? Don't, don't do the bare minimum to get something to work. <coughs> Remember those hacks I mentioned before? Don't, don't do that. Understand why you're writing what you're writing and have pride in it. Actually, take enjoyment from coding. Coding is like an art form, okay? There's a beauty to it. And you can create that beauty. Beauty doesn't come from properly invented code, weird function names, and you know, it's just nonsense logic. No, actually, do what you can to make it elegant and simple and understandable and everything else. Focus on doing a good job, not a quick one. Consider who's going to work with your code in the future. What are they going to think of that code? If they see all of your hacks, your messy code, you know, your shortcuts, what are they going to think of that? More importantly, what are they going to think of you? What if that person down the road is somebody you are going to work with, who might, who you might actually employ? Say, you, uh, you're in a position in a company of, uh, uh, dealing with new candidate or new employer, uh, new, <laughs> new employees, and this person hands in a CV. What are you going to think? Oh, this is a potential candidate. Yeah, look at the CV. No, you're going to see his code. You're going to remember the shitty code that he wrote years and years and years ago, and you're going to think, next. Okay? Don't get yourself into that situation. Always, always be trying to do the best job possible. It might not be perfect every time, nobody's perfect, but trust me, it shows in the code when you've made the effort. Even if it's not necessarily the right thing, it shows that you've tried, and that's the key thing. Thank you very much for listening. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how long this went, uh, hopefully not too far over. Um, yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this. Like I said, this is potentially the basis for a longer talk. Uh, I could have demonstrated the code snippets, you know, problems with things I've encountered over the past 12, 13 years. Um, but obviously that was far, far too much for, for a lightning talk like this. Um, but yeah, I hope, uh, I hope you all got something from this. <laughs>